This problem introduces another new issue that we haven't talked about yet. Try to determine the configuration around the stereo center, but don't worry if you get stuck because again there is something involved here that we haven't discussed yet. Here's the stereo center. We'll put dots in. The atoms that are directly connected to the stereo center. There's a four-way tie between four carbons. This carbon is triple bonded to a carbon, which we count as three separate carbons. This carbon is bonded to a carbon, a carbon, and a carbon. On the dash, the carbon is double bonded to a carbon. We treat that as two separate carbons, and here's another carbon up here on the methyl group. And down here on the lower left, this carbon is attached to a carbon, a carbon, a carbon. So we've continued the three-way tie. Each of the dotted atoms is attached to three more carbons. So I need to erase each dot and move it one step further out. So I'm going to erase this dot and this list and put a new dot over here. Now what about over here? Well, here's the new issue that we haven't talked about before. The new issue is we have a couple of choices here. We could put the next dot on this carbon, or we could put it on this carbon. And these two paths are not identical to each other. We're going to get different results if we go down this path than if we go down this path. So we better figure out which is the correct path to go down. Well, first of all, let me erase this list so we don't need it anymore. So the question is, where should I put the next dot? Along this path or this path? Of course, these two paths are identical. So it doesn't matter whether you choose this one or this one, but it does make a big difference whether you choose one of these or this one up top. Well, here's the rule. You're also always supposed to choose the path that is going to end up giving you the highest priority. We have to choose the path that's going to end up giving us the highest priority. And we use the, uh, how do we determine the priority? The same way as usual, first point of difference. So now we have to go along both paths until we get to the first point of difference between the paths. And at that first point of difference, whichever group gets the higher priority, that's, whichever path gets the higher priority, that's the path we should take. So let me put in some arrows to show what our options are here. We might go along this path, or we might go along this path. There's no point considering this path because it's the same as this one down here. Well, um, let's see. Uh, here we have a carbon, and here we have a carbon, so that's a tie. What are the three things this carbon is attached to? A fluorine, a hydrogen, and a hydrogen. And what are the three things that this carbon is attached to? A nitrogen and two hydrogens. This carbon is attached to a nitrogen and two hydrogens. And this carbon is attached to a fluorine and two hydrogens. Well, now we've gotten to the first point of difference between the two paths. The first point of difference is at the first atom in, this li in the list. So this fluorine is better than this nitrogen. That means that we should take this bottom path. So here's the notation that I suggest that you use if you have to do a hard problem like this where there's more than one possible path. If you're considering more than one possible path, notice that I haven't moved the dot yet. There's no point moving the dot because I don't know where to put the dot. So I'm keeping the old dot where it used to be on this carbon. Um, and now I'm putting in these two arrows to show the two possible paths. And then I'm making a list for what we encounter along both paths. And then we can decide um, at the first point of difference which path is better. So now that we've decided that this lower path is better, I can erase this list, and I can erase that arrow. We've decided to go along this path, so now I can erase the arrow and put the new dot in over here. So all that work was done just to see, um, just to figure out that when we move the dot further out, we're moving it down to this carbon and not up to this one. Of course, if you wanted to, you could put the dot on this carbon instead. There's no difference between taking this path and this path. But we do have to make sure we don't go along this path. That's going to end up giving us a lower priority. So that's the new idea that we've learned here. What do you do when you're moving the dot further out from the stereo center if there's more than one path that you can go down? Well, you need to go down the path that's going to end up giving you the higher priority at the first point of difference. So you might have to do a little sub-problem to figure out which path is going to be better. Uh, now we have to move this dot out as well. Well, again, we have two choices. Let's erase this list. But I could move the dot over here, or I could move the dot up here towards the methyl group. Which of those is going to be better? Well, if we ended up over here, this carbon, what's this carbon attached to? You go back along the pi bond, and you have two fluorines. You have to put the fluorines first, because they have the highest atomic, higher atomic number. So along this path, we'd reach a carbon that's connected to a fluorine, two fluorines, and another carbon back along the pi bond. Remember that we go backwards along the pi bonds. Um, whereas, if we went along this path, we would also reach a carbon, 
Just like when we go along this path, we reach a carbon. Along this path, we reach a carbon. But if we went along this path, we would reach a carbon that's attached to three hydrogens. Well, it's pretty clear that this path over here is going to be better. This fluorine meets this hydrogen. So again, you can see the notation that's good to use. Draw arrows indicating the two possible paths. Use lists to try to figure out which path is better. And now we can erase some of our work. We don't need to consider this path anymore. That was inferior. And we can move this dot over here. There's no point erasing this list because we're going to need this list when we evaluate this carbon. Ah, so actually it looks like I made a mistake when I erased the list that I had over here as well. Um, when I was figuring out that I was going to go along this path, um, I should have kept the list. Um, the list was that this carbon was attached to a fluorine and two hydrogens. That's something I, or I already figured out when I decided that this path was better than this one. Well, there's no point erasing this list because I'm going to need it in a second anyway. So we should only erase the work we're not going to need anymore. Now we're going to go down here to the bottom left. We have to move this out further. Where should we put this dot? Well, it doesn't matter whether we move it up or to the left, because these two groups are the same. Um, but this group down here is different. So we have to choose between going down this path and going down this path. Now, either way, we're going to hit a carbon. Hit a carbon here and hit a carbon here. So let's make a list of the three atoms that those carbons are attached to. This carbon is attached to two fluorines and a hydrogen. Of course, we never go back along the sigma bond. And this carbon over here is attached to a chlorine and two hydrogens. A chlorine and two hydrogens. Of course, we have to put the chlorine first. You always put the best group at the top of your list. Well, the first point of difference comes here. The chlorine beats this fluorine. Uh, remember that you only look for the first point of difference. Uh, it's irrelevant that the second atom here is a fluorine and this is a hydrogen. That's irrelevant. We just look at the first point of difference. This chlorine beats this fluorine. Um, so we've decided now we should not take this path towards the left. Instead, we should take the downward path. That's going to end up giving us the higher priority. So let's go ahead and erase this arrow and erase this list. We can erase this dot and put a new dot in over here because we've moved down to this carbon. I can erase this arrow. However, there's no point erasing this list because we're going to need this list now to evaluate this carbon. Okay, now when we were deciding where to move the dots, we already have been having to draw the list, so the three atoms that the dotted atoms were connected to. The only one that we don't have a list for yet is this carbon down here. We haven't get, yet gotten a list of the three atoms that this carbon is attached to. Well, it's attached to a fluorine. And then we go back along the pi bonds. We go back along one pi bond to list the carbon, and we go back towards the stereocenter along the second pi bond to list another carbon. We don't go back along the sigma bond. So now for each of the dotted atoms, we have a list of the three atoms that the dotted atom is connected to. First points of difference. The first point of difference here is that this chlorine beats all the other first atoms in the list. This chlorine beats the fluorine, and this fluorine, and this fluorine. So the bottom left group gets the number one priority. All the other first atoms are fluorines, so those are tied. But then we have a difference in the second atoms. The second atom in this list is a fluorine. The second atom in this list is a carbon, and the second atom in this list is a hydrogen. So that gives us a clear order. The second atom in this list is a fluorine. That gives us the number two priority. The second atom in this list is a carbon. That gives us the number three priority. And the second atom in this list is a hydrogen. That gives us the lowest number four priority. Now that we finally have the priorities, we can erase our work. Number four priority is pointing towards us, so we need to swap it so that it's pointing away from us. We'll swap it with the number two. Now the number four is pointing away from us. Now the configuration of one to two to three on the page is clockwise, which is R. But what was the configuration before the swap? According to the single swap rule, before the swap it must have had the opposite configuration. So the correct configuration of this stereo center is S. This stereo center has an X configuration. Again, the big lesson from this problem, the big new thing that we haven't talked about before is when you are uh, moving your dot further out from the stereo center, when you're breaking a tie by moving further out, what do you do if there's more than one path that you can move along? 
Well, you have to move along the path that's going to end up giving you the higher priority. And I introduced some notation that I think is helpful for those types of problems. Using arrows to indicate the two possible paths, continuing to use lists to indicate the lists of three atoms that you would be um, encountering along those paths. If you feel like you're ready, you can start to use less of this notation on the easier problems. You don't need to be writing down all these lists and dots on the problems that are easy and obvious to you. But when you come across a problem that you think might be challenging or difficult, especially on a test, of course, I definitely encourage you to go back to using all of this notation. Uh, again, it can help us to avoid a lot of careless mistakes that happen when you try to do this in your head. On a complicated problem like this, where you're actually evaluating different paths, that gives you sub-problems inside the main problem. And that's where it's especially important to use good notation. And also, when you're doing these sub-problems inside the main problem, it's especially important to keep erasing your work once you're done with it before you go on to the next part of the problem. If you don't keep erasing your work, you're going to end up with work all over the place and start getting very confused by your notes. So you should be erasing your work as you go through a complicated problem like this, just like I erase the work on the board as we go through the problem.